Agata Stoinska is a person who lives her dream, actually. She's a fashion photographer. She's based in Dublin. Her background is in architecture, so I think it's uh, quite visible in her uh, stunning photographs. I was working for a magazine called Prudence, and we had seen her work, so we cast her to do a fashion editorial for us. And I remember her tiny business card saying, Agata Stoinska, photographer. I actually attended to, uh, some workshops here in the studio. And that was a time when I was working for a lifestyle magazine called Posca Express, so I thought, hmm, I must get in touch with this girl. I was organizing a fashion show once here. She was looking for a studio manager, <laughs> but I was working um, obviously in the makeup. What she does is not really just simply taking snaps. She's like a professional photographer dealing with the top Irish uh, models and fashion people and hairdressers. She was, she was already in the business when I met her. I think that the most important thing while I'm photographing, while I'm taking picture, is to get a real connection with the model or whoever I'm photographing. So many times I tell them the story to, to give them the feel of, of the situation I want to photograph. I love people and I love dealing with them and I love when the person can change into someone new uh, to pretend someone but almost believe that he is this person and express it in the pictures. It helps me a lot to translate it, what I have in my mind. I think that I compose my photograph the same way how I watch movies. I frame them like it is a movie. Obviously it's different if you do uh, fashion photography which is on the white backdrop, it's in the studio and stuff, that's, that's a different story. But if I take pictures which are supposed to tell the story, they look like a steel frame from movies. I really love Paolo Roversi. I love his moody style, very dreamy, very sexy. And in the same time, I really like Lindbergh, like he's brilliant. Peter Lindbergh is just great and you can feel this connection with women on his pictures. Um, and as well, his style is, is cinematic as well as mine. I was very frustrated when I finished my university because there was not many jobs for architects and they weren't paid well. I heard that Ireland is looking for, for architects. Uh, I got a job. Although in the same time I got a job with one of the big movies in Poland. So I was kind of juggling two jobs in the same time. After the first few weeks I had to tell my boss that I need to go back for a month to finish a movie. Although I must say that he was a really nice guy and very understanding and I think he was kind of this creative artistic soul, whatever you call it. I got to the point when I was working on the pictures at night and during the day I was in the office. I just was very frustrated about this and I could feel that my boss is frustrated as well that I'm not putting 100% into my job while I could feel that I'm not putting 100% into photography. And I had to quit architecture. Business people say that if you survive during recession, then you're grant. <laughs> Depends on the day. Sometimes I think it was a madness, sometimes it was a blessing. But um, it's only recently I was invited for a conference, Women in Business, and that was in Berlin. I didn't expect it that I'm supposed to talk at this conference. And I was thinking, like, I'm not a business woman, actually. I'm a photographer. I'm actually architect turned into photographer and I'm still not sure what I'm doing, if I'm doing this right. So in my case, uh, when I decided to be a photographer, I had to register everything. So that was the first step towards business. And then when I have opened Delight Studios, I had to open the company. So actually business, it's a side effect of what I'm doing. And when I've realized that actually, oh, okay, it is recession and I'm opening a new business, I was thinking that maybe recession, it is the best time. I had a, a financial investor, uh, which was great at the beginning because I really didn't have money to put into this business. I had some savings, but it wasn't enough at all to renovate a place like this. Uh, and I had no experience as a business person. I had no idea what it means to have a company. And he has changed his mind in the very last minute. Uh, 
that's when I had everything signed. We had the company opened and when we had the builders on the site. So I already had commitments to pay them. Uh, I've started organizing a huge opening for 200 guests. A fabulous night. Uh, it took a, quite a few months to have the studio ready because at the beginning it was just a warehouse. So you can imagine that it wasn't really a place that you could uh, invite famous people and shoot um, music videos. And amazing people were helping me with it and there were a good few of them. So. It was really stressful for me because I had to make the decision, okay, am I going um, forward with it, but how with no money? Uh, and how am I going to tell everyone that actually we have to cancel everything? That's great that you've been working for the last couple of months really hard. Half of Irish fashion industry came over uh, to celebrate and also to watch a video about uh, Irish uh, fashion industries. And, and someone has advised me to contact Enterprise Board and apply for grant. Um, I had a week to prepare everything, all my paperwork, all the business plan and application. And I just said to everyone that I've organized money, even though I knew that actually I will get results in the next month or two. But I just didn't want it to stop. Unfortunately, within a year I got the answer and it was positive. And I think that it was the best blessing for me really that this investor has quit it. I think that I don't treat myself as seriously. I don't think I ever really treated myself so uh, serious. Um, but now I'm much more relaxed. I think that if you don't have the right attitude, you just spend 20 or seven with your business. When I made my mind that I would like to be a photographer and I would like to do fashion, I had no idea where I should start. But I was lucky enough that my agent, Rebecca Morgan, she has explained me a lot. I felt confident to ask her any silly question. And she knew my background, she knew that I don't know anything about this business, so she, she was explaining me everything. And many times I was just making mistakes or uh, pretending that I know what I'm doing while I didn't, and the next time I knew. Uh, but I was thinking that I've learned all this stuff quite hard way. Like all this kind of side of photography, which you're normally not interested in, you're not worried about. Well, if you start working as a photographer, suddenly you have to deal with it. So that's the reason why I decided to start workshops like this, uh, just to share my knowledge and give the information, whatever I was looking for. Then during the workshop, we do as well photo shoots. So just for them to see how to deal with model, how to, um, direct care, that's very important as well. Unless you want to try many different things and that's just ask January to, to go for it. I work as a fashion editor for a social and personal magazine and a fashion stylist. It involves organising fashion shoots for magazines, for ads, for commercials. It often means me coming up with a concept for the shoot, casting photographers, hairdressers, makeup artists. What I specialise then is the wardrobe, so it's getting the right clothes for the job and, you know, coming up with a style and making sure everything looks slick on the day. <laughs> Designers go to fabric fairs about, you know, a year and a half or two years ahead of us and, you know, that kind of predetermines what's available to them. And that's why you often see designers using the same colour or the same, you know, concept in their collection. But um, the rest of us would very much take our lead from the catwalk and from, you know, key designers. With the internet as well, um, trends are led from the street. You know, you can have a teenager, you know, living in, in Germany or Sweden and she posts a photo of her blog and she's styled herself in a certain way. And the next minute you could have like a trend director for a high street store seeing that look, loving it and basing a collection on it. And suddenly the jeans that the, the teenager in Sweden is wearing get mass produced and are in a high street near you. So I mean, fashion, you know, we're all feeding off one another. I think we're both very direct, we're very straight people, we don't do fancy frilliness and we're very honest um, and I really appreciate her honesty because I can't stand having to massage people's egos and say oh you're fabulous or you're fabulous and this is amazing, if something's not working I could say it to her and I think that level of honesty is really good because you're not doing it in a nasty way, you're doing it for the good of the shoot so that everything looks really really well. Although we're, we're not the same, there's a practicality about us. That, that is similar. We're quite masculine actually in our way. I think we approach business, yeah. The other thing I love about Agatha is I can ring her up or sit down with her and say, listen, I have this mad idea. 
and she'll listen to it and she'll be like, okay, let's do it. I basically had this dream and it was really vivid. I dreamt doing this shoot where it was um, like the model was a puppet and all the clothes were black and white. I was like, I have to do this shoot. This is amazing. Anyway, we did this as, we, as a test and it ended up being the cover of Glow magazine and we did publish it in Social and Personal. I think it was um, 2010. 10. It was all black and white, the clothes. It was Everything was really geometric, graphic. I made these crossbars and spray painted them black so the model looked like she was, you know, one of those marionette puppets. We did it for the love of the art. Nobody had commissioned us to do it and they're always the ones which are the most fun because you don't have any barriers or parameters or you don't have to be commercial or you don't have to worry about people going, oh, will they wear the clothes? It's just doing it to create something beautiful. I think that the biggest highlight is uh, it's now, I think, when I have a studio and it's kind of comfortably set finally, and when I have the magazine, which I always dreamt about. There is no such a publication uh, so far um, on Irish market. A big, nicely edited, slick, elegant photo magazine. At the moment we are in uh, places like Seoul, Singapore, Taiwan, uh, we're in London, we're in Manchester, we're in Amsterdam, Berlin, um, which is great. <laughs> Each issue of uh, Blow has a different team. Sometimes uh, they're influenced by events, uh, the local events that happen in Dublin. Issue uh, 2, uh, it's a film-inspired issue um, and it came out during the time of the Jamison International Dublin Film Festival. It's like a great platform for these people but because they showcase not only young local photographers but also in the same edition you would have uh, photographs by like renowned global names. You could see that during the Homeless Gallery uh, which happens here every year during the Photo Island Festival. We had 122 photographers um, showing their work um, in Studio A and Studio B. We had 900 visitors during the opening day, which is amazing. It was Sunday in Dublin, uh, twice in a row, like with the same number. It's really up to the people, up to the photographers, uh, to make it as attractive uh, to the visitors so they actually come to their spot and admire their, their work. There are massive plans, but they may go ahead, they may not, I will do everything what I can. But I still need to wait, it will be a big surprise in my I wouldn't like to talk about this action. I'm not really sure. My only dream always was to be happy and do what I like. No, I'm happy I did this. It's very frustrating when I see students of photography and I ask them, okay, so you can drink your portfolio and we can talk about this. They're like, oh, I don't really have any. Like, how come? Oh, we didn't do any projects yet. But you must have like tons of your own pictures and they don't so this is very frustrating then I know that well why do you do photography why, why actually you don't do photography <laughs> talk about photography call other photographers to talk with them about photography don't be afraid to change your style don't look for your own style just take as many pictures as you can uh, and this way you will find your way We've been doing a shoot with the best photographer in Ireland because she knows what she wants and that was an amazing experience to work with her. She's all the time showing me how to not use my hands for the different things. I've been doing the shoots before with uh, so many different people and I'm so happy that I'm here today. I would love to see her probably at the cover of Vogue magazine. <laughs> she's a brilliant person, so I hope that she succeeds in anything that she wishes for. I, I think Agatha has a lot to offer in the fashion industry and I would love for her to get agencies abroad. I know she's got one in Poland, but I think she should get an agency in London and New York, and I think she should start, um, you know, showing her stuff more because I think her, I think it's of a very international standard. I'd be happy to see them grow even bigger, uh, the brands becoming like a well-recognized place uh, on the cultural map of Dublin. I think it's organically forming into a very creative environment where people can come, whether they're dancers or artists or, you know, writers and they can use this space and I'd like to see it, you know, develop as, as a creative space, you know, that people can use. I think it's amazing what she's put together, but I, I think for her to develop as a photographer, she needs to move outside Ireland a lot more. Brilliant.
So we're done. Thank you. vision of beautiful women, which like Chloe, they are beautiful, but um, but we might know these young teenagers who think that all of them are so skinny and if you wear this dress you're supposed to look like this. And, and this is the sad part of this industry, but that's the way it works unfortunately.